Hey YouTube, uh, welcome to this week's video. I do want to open up, uh, as I'm going to be opening up for the near future, every video with the design of the week from my uh, spring store. You can uh, go to that store by clicking on a link below the video or in a direct link that I've posted in the comments section. And the design this week uh, is up here. I just call it Lantern. It is a depiction of the good old Coleman 249 Lantern. It was marketed from the 1930s to the 1950s. So get your classic camping freak flag on. I also want to mention uh, we have now instituted memberships on this video where I provide members only content and in the future maybe a few goo gods, gim cracks, doodads and falderal. Uh, you can access that by clicking on the link that is below this video or in the link that is golly I gotta get this right okay the link that is above in the upper right hand corner of my home page okay and there is a direct link in the comments below okay all right let's get in for a little bit foreshadowing Ooh. let me start this video out by saying that uh, in the world of literature uh, storytellers screenwriters authors they have a device that they call foreshadowing a and that's kind of a, you know, they'll, they'll introduce a scene or a conversation or something that kind of sets the mood. It, you know, it, 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 the movie may open to some peaceful woodland glen with a babbling brook and then the camera will pan and it'll focus on a pool of blood. Okay, and then it'll dissolve and it'll open up in some suburban house. Okay. Uh, you know something bad's going to happen. Everything's going to look great, and then something bad's going to happen. That's what that foreshadowing is. Sometimes foreshadowing is used, particularly by mystery writers in, in movies, where there will be a scene or a conversation where there's a tidbit of information given that is a clue, that is actually the clue that solves the whole thing. You just don't know it. You don't know it until near the end. When all of a sudden it comes to you and you turn to the person next to you and you say, I know who did it. I know who did it. Do you know why they showed us her putting that cheese in the Wheaties? It's her. Let me tell you how they did it with the cheese. Okay. Got a little excited there. That's what this, this video here is. This, this serves as a bit of foreshadowing. What we're going to talk about here are two instances, two products that were designed in 1938 by two different guys separated by a continent. One of them was born in 1899, the other one was born in 1922. Both of them, well actually one of them was deeply affected by his experience in the Second World War where it came to designing gear. The other one affected the war through the gear he designed. First guy is a fellow named Jerry Cunningham. Uh, Jerry was born on the West Coast. He grew up in the Adirondacks of New York. He was a very avid skier. And in the Adirondacks, you do a little bit of mountain climbing. You don't, you don't do Rocky Mountain alpine climbing. But you do go up and you do go down. And some of it's rocky. Okay. Very avid skier. Uh, 
he's quoted as saying, they asked him in school uh, what he wanted to do with his life, and his answer on his essay was, what I want to do with my life is chuck this education and go live in the mountains. Well, Jerry was 16 years old. He was still in high school. But he started out on the path to getting that life when he designed something that you use every day if you're a backpacker. Every day you backpack, you use the thing he invented. You know what he did? It's one of those things where you say, how come nobody thought of that before? Jerry Cunningham is the first guy to put a zipper on a pocket in a backpack. Not only that, he's the first guy to, to uh, use the, a tear, he wasn't the first guy to use a teardrop shape on, the ga uh, on, on a backpack, but he was the first one to separate it in the middle. That's what the zipper was all about. Uh, Jerry was all about being able to stack your load, to distribute your load. And the pack he designed, he said, uh, when he was asked later, he designed a pack that was flat, that would lay up against your back while skiing. Uh, kind of like the Bergen pack, but smaller and lighter. Okay, now, that's 1938. We're going to hear more about Jerry Cunningham later. Jerry is going to serve as the uh, end of the World War II portion of the history of camping gear. He will serve as the opening the door to the backpacking revolution, and he deserves that title. we got about four or five videos to go before we get there, so this is foreshadowing for Jerry Cunningham. Now let's talk about the other guy. Okay, now while Jerry Cunningham was in the Adirondacks of New York using the mailing list he got as being uh, from being a member of the National Ski Patrol there in New York uh, to send pamphlets and catalogs to everybody who is in the National Ski Patrol uh, selling his zippered backpack. There's a guy on the other side of the continent, just outside of Seattle, who went fishing with a friend. And uh, they'd been out all day. It had been a getting cold. And his friend was kind of walking a little bit faster than he did and went out ahead of him. And as he's hiking out, he realizes that he notices in himself the signs of oncoming hypothermia. Now, he was carrying a pistol and he had the presence of mind to fire three quick shots in the air, which used to be the universal signal in the woods for distress. His friend came back and helped him back to the vehicle. But, but this guy was, was really, really, really worried about this thing. Uh, he realized he could have died because he didn't have the right clothing for that weather. It wasn't winter. He wasn't wearing a wool Mackinac. But it wasn't summer, so he wasn't in his shirt sleeves. But he wanted something that would, he could wear that was lightweight didn't take up a lot of space, but would retain heat. Well, he sat down and he scribbled a bunch of stuff and he made some drawings and he got with his friend Omi Diver and got him to sew something up for him. And it looked kind of like this. What I am wearing here is a reproduction of the Eddie Bauer Skyliner jacket that he designed in 1938 and he got his friend Omi Diver to sew the jacket together. He applied for a patent. The patent was issued in 1940. But Eddie Bauer designed the first fleece, uh, goose down puffer jacket. 
you've got one. You've got you've got a puffer jacket. You've got a puffer vest. You got a sleeping bag full of this crap. Okay, this particular reproduction was made by the Eddie Bauer Company in the 1990s. It's a very close reproduction. You can buy a much better one from a company called Huckberry. They have very, very closely uh, reproduced the original Skyliner jacket. This will give you an idea of the mind of Eddie Bauer. And Eddie Bauer is destined for greater things in the Second World War. So this part of this video is the foreshadowing for Eddie Bauer and other things that are going to be developed during the Second World War. Okay, now, in 1938, Eddie Bauer was already a fairly well-established businessman in the outdoor industry, uh, regionally in the uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, while Jerry Cunningham was just beginning uh, his life as an outdoor, uh, a vendor of outdoor gear and inventor of outdoor gear. They were separated by a continent. Eddie Barr was 30 years older. They have one thing in common though, and what we're going to do now with that is we're going to start a game that we're going to play throughout the World War II and early 1960s. Whenever I talk about a personality, someone who has invented or done something great in the history of camping gear. And we're going to, the, the game is based on a parlor game that was played in the 80s and 90s that was called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Now, uh, that game is based on a sociological theory called Six Degrees of Separation. It basically says that any two human beings on the planet can be connected together through for other human beings. Six degrees of separation. Okay. The game that was played in, in parlors across America, particularly with movie buffs, was Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, where you would name two movie stars, and then you would try to connect them together through their association with Kevin Bacon. So, not only has this video provided foreshadowing for the beginning of World War II and uh, Eddie Bauer's part in it, and the post-war period and Jerry Cunningham's part in it, but it also provides a clue for the game Six Degrees of Omi Diver. Now, I just told you how Omi Diver and Eddie Bauer are connected together. In fact, I told you about that in the video. Omi is a name you should know. Okay? But now we've got Jerry Cunningham and Eddie Bauer separated by a continent, separated by 30 years, and they have a connection to Omi Diver. So the game we're going to play, Six Degrees of Omi Diver, the prize is going to be a uh, copy of my book, uh, my collector's guide for Kelty Packs. I have it for sale in my store. I will put a link to it down in the comments if you want to go ahead and buy one and not mess with this game. But the first person who said, had, makes a comment on this video that correctly identifies the connection between Eddie Bauer and Jerry Cunningham through Omi Diver in less than six steps. Okay, the first person who does that will win a free copy of my book. And I'll tell you right now, there are two possible answers. So I'm going to give away two prizes. The first one who gets one answer and the first one who gets the second. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, one of those answers I, was, I gave to you when I did the video on Omi Diver. Okay, the other one might take a little bit of research on your part. 
Okay? So, sit back, do a little bit of research, watch another video. I'll link to uh, that one at the end of this video. And play our game. we got a number of guys we're going to talk about in the next 8-10 videos. And all of them can be linked together uh, through Omi Diver. Okay? All right. Crack open your book. This is an open book test, guys. All righty. Uh, the next video is going to be me stepping into the middle of controversy once again. And uh, it doesn't involve any, it doesn't involve six degrees of Omi Diver. So you got a while to study. Okay? All right. We'll see you down the trail.